Africa, the birthplace of man and home to the largest population of wild animals on the planet. Legend says East Africa's original inhabitants followed the Nile, the longest river in the world, until they arrived at its source. Today, Lake Victoria is bordered by three of Africa's 54 countries, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. Kisumu is a bustling town on the Kenyan shore. This former fishing village, birthed by Africa's first continental railroad, is now the fastest growing city in Kenya, fed by commerce, technology, and learning. Kisumu is Africa, colorful, complicated, and challenging. And now Harvard summer school students are able to learn about these challenges and experience Africa in Kisumu. You know, initially when I thought of putting this class together around innovations, it's a topic that kept coming up over and over again everywhere I traveled to speak, was wanting to know how can we move the needle, how can we do something disruptive. I looked around the African continent as to where the best opportunity was to partner and create a course where we could truly insinuate our students into the local context as quickly as possible. It's an eight credit uh, course through Harvard. Every student, uh, regardless of whether they're, they're Harvard students or non-Harvard students, will, will get Harvard summer school credit for the course. And it's all for a letter grade. So I have never been to Africa. I've actually never been abroad. Um, and I originally thought about going maybe to Europe this summer. And then when I had this opportunity, I thought, when's the next time I'm going to be able to go to Africa, especially with such a well-trained staff and amazing faculty. and. Just, they set up so many great um, opportunities for us. For example, the Kakamega Forest Adventure and the safari this weekend, in addition to orphanage visits. So I figured this is a once in a lifetime experience. So the program is a Harvard program, but it has students from other universities. And so it's been eye-opening, not only in being here in Kenya and trying to open our eyes to something that's completely foreign to us, but also in learning from other peers. The idea is that innovations uh, exist everywhere, that uh, it's not just a high-tech gadget or, or technology that we think of in the United States, it's also locally uh, homegrown technologies that can be inexpensive and affordable that can impact communities uh, locally. At Child Fund, we are starting a program called the Kids Program, which focuses on um, improving childhood health and education. So the first component of the program is a children's picture book, and it's called The Wild Health Herd, and it'll be a three-set book, the first book being about malaria, the second book being about germ theory, and the third book being about childhood nutrition and wellness. When we were drawing the animals, it was funny because they said, wow, in America they teach kids how to draw. Look, they can draw. They spend time doing this. And that was just sort of an eye-opening moment for us because we realized that a lot of schools here focus a lot on memorization because they don't have books. Once they learn about malaria through the animal characters, they're going to do the race to the net game where they learn how to use the net and it's sort of like tag, where if you're under the net, it's safe. This particular university has this very unusual theme and uh, they claim themselves to be the only indigenous university in East Africa, which means it was not started by colonialists and it was not started by government, but it was started by individuals who are Kenyan, who have been leaders in government, leaders in health, and it specifically is a public health university. We uh, teach not only in the class, but we also teach in the community and in partnership with the community. Uh, which is unique to us, so that a graduate of this university is uh, uniquely prepared to engage in the rough world out there. We think that uh, with this model, there are several advantages. One of them, it creates opportunity for students from Harvard to understand and enter into communities and understand what are the challenges, what is going on, what are the potentials that Africa for this matter has. We were assigned to work with Nyanza Reproductive Health Society. Our project is to come up with and implement a device that will sustainably and inexpensively help recruit men for voluntary male medical circumcision and help reduce the spread of HIV across the Nyanza province of Kenya. 
our component is of uh, developing a device is like a rudimentary redesign of a jock strap, basically. And we are searching for a material that could be absorptive and um, providing more comfort for the wound after circumcision takes place. Um, and so KMET is the main producer of reusable female sanitary napkins. And we thought that would be a perfect material. But the trick is obviously advertising a female sanitary napkin to a male audience in a male dominated culture. And if you're in Boston trying to solve this problem, you're gonna solve it from an American point of view and say, here's the latest technology. This works great here. I'm gonna send it over and it's gonna be super innovative in Kenya that wouldn't work. That would be a complete flop. And that's why our projects have been so challenging, because we kind of had to take off our American goggles and try to approach the problem from a way that we've never been raised to do. Cross-cultural communication and cross-cultural relationships can be very difficult. And these six weeks will maybe transform that aspect of their lives completely. The students have already more than met or surpassed my, my hopes and uh, our expectations. And what I did not expect is that each student would actually end up with a project that they're owning, that they're carrying forward, and they're actually making a difference while they're here. And the friendships that everybody forms in this group are they're not superficial friendships because everybody here really cares about making a difference, whether they're pre-med or government majors or want to be lawyers. They're getting something very meaningful about this from this experience. Coming to Africa on this trip was like the perfect mix of entertainment and education. You know, like we, we're learning so much and we're learning every day, but it's nice to kind of step out of the classroom and, you know, do the traditional tourist thing for a little bit. I think the summer program has been a unique experience. The students have had an opportunity to learn about history, culture, religion. They've taken Swahili lessons. The students have had an opportunity to lie at bed at night and be awakened by the roar of a lion. And uh, those are all unique experiences that we, we don't have lions in Cambridge. <laughs>